Good evening. I'm Laura Shepard, Communications Director for the City, and I am honored to be the first one to welcome you to the 2013 State of the City Address. I would like to ask all of you to please rise as uh, the Gresham uh, VFW Post 180 presents the colors. And I'd like to introduce the Gresham High School Overtones, who will lead us in the national anthem. Gresham is Oregon's fourth largest city, a community brimming with history, diversity, and festivals that mark the passing of seasons. With living options from upscale condominiums to executive housing, cherished by generations for its historic downtown and authentic small town charm, home to semiconductor and aerospace manufacturing. Come see for yourself. Revisit Gresham. Reimagine opportunity. Before I start, I will invite everyone to turn off cell phones or turn them to vibrate. So we all know we forget that until uh, it starts ringing. My name is Carolyn Eccles, and I am this year's Gresham City Council President. On behalf of the City Council, I want to welcome you to this year's State of the City Address. It's wonderful to see so many community members and friends here this evening. We also want to thank Mount Hood Community College for opening this beautiful venue for our gathering tonight. Mount Hood is a strong community partner delivering vital services in East County, and we appreciate everything that the college does. It is my honor to introduce my friend Shane Bemis for this year's State of the City Address. I first met Shane over 13 years ago through the Gresham Chamber, and it was as apparent then as it is today that he has a heart for this city and an unparalleled commitment to doing all he can to make Gresham the best ever. 
There are countless examples of Mayor Bemis's commitment to our community. From exerting his influence to improve safety conditions in public transportation, to providing leadership in bringing business and jobs to Gresham, Mayor Bemis always acts with one primary guiding principle. What is the best that we can do for our community? As with many of you, I have been inspired time and time again by Mayor Bemis's ability to handle any situation, whether comforting a family and a community following horrific and senseless violence, or standing firm and respectful during heated debates over how to protect emergency services from further decimation, Mayor Bemis leads with grace and wisdom. If you've been to one of Mayor Bemis' State of the City speeches, you know that he calls it as he sees it. His frank and direct assessment of Gresham's challenges and opportunities may not always be what we want to hear, but we can trust that his message is an honest and factual rendering of where we are today and what our future holds tomorrow. As with each of you, the Council looks forward to the annual State of the City Address. We know that the Mayor will deliver the message that is on his heart, and by doing so, he will help define a path and a vision for us as a community to nurture, build, and grow our livability and prosper. Please join me in warmly welcoming Mayor Shane Bemis to deliver the 2013 State of the City Address. Thank you very much, Council President Eccles, and thank you for the, the very kind words. Members of the Gresham City Council, elected leaders, city employees, and friends of Gresham, thank you for being here tonight for the 2013, 2013 State of the City Address, or as I like to call it, my annual eye exam. The font is, for this, this time, this year, the font is the same. It's the first time it hasn't gone up since I've been mayor, so I'm holding steady to that. Eric told me that I need to get a new set of eyes. It wasn't the font anymore, so... First and foremost, I want to offer a, a huge thank you to the Gresham High School Overtones. Um, that was beautiful, and it reminded me again why I could never quite make the cut to be an overtone. Um, fantastic, thank you. Uh, thank you also to the VFW uh, Post 180 for presenting the colors, and also for being such a positive force in this community. Thank you for your service. Speaking of, of people who are tremendous forces in our community, it is my pleasure to honor my partners on the City Council, including Council President Carolyn Eccles and Veteran Councilors Josh Fuhrer and Lori Stegman. Along with the old guard, we've got a few tremendous new Councilors who I'd like to introduce to you too if you haven't already met them. Councilor Mike McCormick has been in the community since 1957 and brings a great background in public safety as a retired Portland firefighter. A Gresham boy, he grew up in Rockwood and attended Centennial High School. He brings an outstanding depth of knowledge and experience in the community to this council. Councilor Jerry Hinton also has a nice tenure in the community and brings some great business chops to the council as the general manager of Brasher's Auto Auction. Prior to being elected to council, Councilor Hinton served on our finance committee, so we'll also benefit from his background in that very important area. Councilor Mario Palmero brings a particular interest in the Rockwood area, and he has immediately provided a valuable voice and perspective in our council deliberations. We are lucky to have his breadth of knowledge and experience on the city council. Please give them a warm welcome to all of our city councilors. You know, you can learn an awful lot about the health of an organization by gauging the cooperation of its policymaking board. Now, I could probably point out a few regional examples of dysfunctional policy boards hinting at dysfunctional government agencies, but something tells me you probably already have those in mind. What I can say is that if you've been to a recent Gresham City Council meeting, you would see a respectful, deliberative, and cooperative team. Now, that doesn't mean that we'll always agree on every issue, but it does mean that we will respect each other and we will always lead with our hearts for the community. 
I also want to thank some of the special guests that are here uh, today, some of our elected partners in no particular order. Uh, Metro Councilor Shirley Craddock, one of our own, former Gresham City Councilor. Uh, also, uh, Gresham Barlow Superintendent Jim Schlachter, Centennial Superintendent uh, Sam Breyer, Reynolds Superintendent Linda Flores, uh, Mount Hood Community College President Michael Hay, uh, former Speaker of the House Lynn Snodgrass is here, former City Councilor Paul Warking, former City Councilor Tom Griffith, and did I miss anyone? Excellent. Okay, I also wanted to introduce a few members uh, uh, of uh, the city administration that are so valuable uh, to the changes that we've been able to uh, have occur at the city, as well as to the day-to-day to -day operations. Many of you um, have uh, probably never heard or seen uh, Eric Kvarsten, but let me tell you something. Eric Kvarsten is our city manager, and he is an incredible city manager. Most city managers last, I think, three or four years. Eric is uh, into his eighth year as a city manager, and I have absolute complete confidence in his ability uh, to deliver for this community and this city. He also leads with his heart. Eric, thank you for all you do. I also wanted to recognize one, uh, one other person from city staff. This is a gentleman that has been with me almost since the very beginning that I took office. Many of you have got to know him. His name is Eric Chambers. He has been, uh, like I said, with me from the very beginning. He answers the phone every time one of you call. He answers and, and helps to get solutions uh, every time uh, that there is a problem. And he has an unwavering, again, support and heart for this community. Eric, thank you for all that you do. And I also couldn't get away without thanking the members of my family because anybody that serves in public service, you know that uh, the family is also a huge support to you. So I want to thank my wife, Alex, my boys, Derek and Jacob. Luke is at home because if he were here, he would be a terror. He's two and every bit of two. Um, uh, my mother is here, Corey Williamson, my stepfather, Jerry, my nephew, Uriah, and his uh, fiance, Mel, and also the guy at the restaurant that makes everything go so that I can do what I do. Steve uh, from the restaurant is here as well. I do have, um, this weekend uh, was the Elks Lodge chose a citizen of the year. Now they chose somebody that volunteers in this community and does tremendous work. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be uh, at the citizen of the year banquet, but I can tell you that this person um, has a true heart for this community, a true passion for this community, and has basically adopted um, every single uh, homeless person that she serves through St. Henry's Church. She's an incredible woman, uh, absolutely amazing heart, and I wanna recognize her tonight. She is my mother, Corey Williamson. Okay. If you've been to one of my State of the City speeches in the past, you, you are probably familiar with the particular approach to this event. Frankly, this is the venue that I use to give a clear, unbiased, plain-spoken account of the health of our community and the challenges and opportunities that face the city of Gresham. In the past, that has meant some hard words on community safety and crime, on revenue and the economy, and on what it is that we hold to be our core values in this community. It has also meant celebrating Gresham and all of her diverse and unique manifestations. We've celebrated our art walks and our teddy bear parades, our pioneer roots and our rugged individualism. And we have celebrated our tremendous volunteers and the many, many hours that they selflessly give to their neighbors. Now, let me tell you, striking the balance between hard truths and exciting causes for optimism isn't easy. And I think that due to the economy and the significant revenue challenges we face, all of us have erred on the side of hard truths these past few years. Forgive me if this year's discussion leans ever so slightly towards optimism and good news, because frankly, that's what I'm seeing in our community. When people see growth and optimism in the future, they invest in it. And right now, that investment is happening in Gresham. In last year's State of the City address, we talked about Gresham's revenue struggles caused by our uniquely low permanent property tax rate. 
We laid out the entirety of the problem for the community and discussed how, one way or another, we would need to take action in the year to come. Well, I'm happy to report that we did. Last fall, the city proposed a police, fire, and park service fee. We went to the public in a series of five town hall meetings. I sent a letter uh, explaining the need to every utility account holder in Gresham, and the city devoted the entire fall newsletter to the topic. Between town halls and city council meetings, we had 10 public sessions dedicated to the fee, and the proposal changed significantly based on the feedback that we heard from the public. An across-the-board service fee was not our first choice, nor did it come easily. But at town hall after town hall, I watched our neighbors come to terms with the magnitude of the issue, accept collective ownership, roll up their sleeves, and make it better. At our first town hall meeting, we had one gentleman show up with a large sign and a stack of interesting literature. He stood outside the door making contact with those who entered and was sharing his written material. Let's just say that this guy made Grover Norquist look like a San Francisco liberal. Well, he hated our guts, at least initially. I will point out that he was on balance pretty friendly. I chatted him up with a bit before and after the form, and he let us know that he'd be traveling to all five of our town halls to protest outside. Well, our second town hall meeting was at Springwater Trail High School, and sure enough, our friend showed up again with his protest sign and his literature. He initially said he'd be protesting outside again, but chilled by the wind, he came into the room to warm up. A couple of minutes after I had started my presentation, he made his way to the very front row and plopped down. As members of the public wrestled through the city's revenue challenges with each other, some opposing the measure, others supporting it, our friend joined the conversation with his own concerns. Now, I probably spoke less at this forum than any other because the conversation transformed from a question and answer type of exchange to a direct dialogue between members of the public, each bringing different perspectives and wrestling through the best way to keep our fire stations open and our police officers patrolling the streets. At the end of the forum, as we were clearing the room and packing up our stuff, the protester made his way over to our city recorder and began discussing the issue. He described his concerns again, and then he did something amazing. He said that despite his hesitation, the police and fire needs had become abundantly clear to him and that he had become a supporter. Now, sure enough, we didn't see him at any other town hall meetings. In the course of the evening, he transformed from our most vocal, passionate critic to a reluctant proponent. Now, I'd like to take credit for part of that change of heart, but at the end of the day, I think we probably have the East County wind to thank for driving him inside. <laughs> now, while the journey may not have been quite so extreme for others, at the forum, we watched the community wrestle to balance their appropriate reluctance to pay with their desire for core services. The most common refrain as as people testified, was their staggering tenure in Gresham. It was not an all uncommon to hear people describe living in the community for 25 years, 35 years, or even 50 years or more. The core element of our community, often silent but always vigilant, was coming out in force, and I knew something important was taking place. By the end of that process, we were hearing that the fee needed to be temporary and capped, and that a levy could be a way to ultimately replace it with a more stable revenue. We were hearing that we needed to have some provisions for low-income residents, and we were hearing that very large businesses needed to be involved in the revenue solution to a greater extent. We adjusted our proposal to accommodate those prudent points and proceeded to adoption. Again, while I will never celebrate asking my neighbors to come up with more money, I absolutely celebrate the maturity and civility with which our community approached the issue. Even the heated exchanges at the forums were largely respectful, and I can say without hesitation that I don't think many other communities could approach an issue like this quite like Gresham did. If Congress could cooperate even a sliver as productively as our residents did during a fee process, we'd be sailing at full speed with bipartisanship, respect, and a dual commitment to do what is right and not dodge hard decisions just because they are hard or because their colleagues have R's or D's after their names. I told you that this year's speech would speak more to the optimism and momentum in our community than to topics like revenue. 
but I will say that while you get this year off, next year we will have to have a conversation again and engage the community and mapping out a, a path that keeps our services whole. In addition to the outstanding spirit of civility and cooperation that the community demonstrated during the Revenue Town Halls, another factor made me proud. In the course of 10 public meetings with many, many residents offering testimony and remarks, there were almost no qualitative complaints about our police, fire, or park services raised in the course of the discussion. That is to say, the one thing that nearly every person agreed on was the quality of service provided by our absolutely outstanding public servants. Now, you could travel the state and not find another community with such unanimous agreement about public safety service quality. To our outstanding police officers and firefighters in attendance today, thank you for working so hard to make that true. We're extremely fortunate to have you serving this community. We often don't do enough to tell the public about the amazing work that these individuals perform each and every day. Fortunately, this speech gives me the opportunity to share just a couple of examples of their tremendous work. At our very first Revenue Town Hall last fall, we had a citizen show up and speak firsthand to the value of our, of our fire and emergency services. He had suffered a heart attack and, as he put it, essentially died in downtown Gresham. A bystander called 911 and our emergency personnel rushed to the scene, performed CPR, and got the gentleman stabilized and sent off to the hospital. To put it more bluntly, they saved his life. Bill Hay is with us tonight because our emergency responders were there when he needed them the most. Mr. Hay, could you please stand up and be recognized? Bill, what's that? Bill told me he may have to duck out early, so um, apparently he might have done that. Bill is just one example of why the services these men and women provide are so critical. It's also worth noting that since his life-altering event, Bill has consistently given back to the city of Gresham through many, many hours of volunteer service. Now, that event was not an anomaly. While we certainly don't have a successful outcome every time, we do more often than most. You may have heard me say before that Gresham has one of the highest cardiac arrest survival rates in the nation. That is a direct result of our outstanding, professional, well-trained fire and emergency service personnel. Some of them are here tonight. Please stand and be recognized for your outstanding contribution. That account, while exemplary of the outstanding service our firefighters and emergency responders provide, is just one example of the calls for service. Last year alone, Gresham Fire and Emergency Services responded to nearly 14,000 calls for service. On the police side, there is no single incident that better exemplifies the dedication, courage, and dogged persistence that the men and women in our police department provide than the tragic Whitney Heichel investigation last year. I have never in my life seen so many people immediately commit to a mission and take their jobs more personally than I did over the course of that tragic week last fall. There was not a person in our police department, sworn or civilian, who was not giving everything that they had to solve that case. Our entire community rallied around that tragic situation, and we came together in our grief and our sadness. Our police officers worked around the clock, chasing down leads and tips, and demonstrated incredible dedication and intuition, identifying a key suspect and successfully making an arrest. The suspect now awaits trial and faces justice thanks to the work of our officers and a watchful, caring, vigilant community. As a community, Gresham cried together over the course of that perilous week and mourned the embodiment of our humanity at its worst. In many ways, Whitney represented all of our wives, our daughters, our sisters, our friends, and loved ones as we watched that investigation unfold. I'm hard-pressed to think of a more heinous situation 
than the tragedy surrounding Whitney. The Whitney Heiko case was one major event in a year that brought the Gresham Police Department 73,000 calls for service. Now our ranks are thin. Our officers are incredibly busy. Would the members of our police department who are here tonight stand and be recognized for your commitment to the safety of our community? Our employees across the board have worked tremendously hard to serve the public and protect the bottom line. When we put out bids to replace the roof at the city's operations center, the prices came in higher than we had anticipated. Looking at the bids, our own facilities employees asked to have a chance to put together a proposal to fix the roof themselves. Sure enough, the number was more favorable than the others, and they completed the project, saving the city $10,000. Now, the operations center roof is just one example of the daily, ordinary, hard work our city employees bring to the table to help us continually do more with less. You probably don't hear about the city's investment officers very often. They're kind of like the NASA engineers. The only time you hear about them is when something terrible happens. Well, I want to change that just a bit tonight. Anybody with some background in finance and investing knows how hard it is to find safe, high-yield investments in today's market. Well, I'm happy to report that our investment staff has done tremendously well relative to our peers, finding an investment return rate better than Hillsborough, Salem, Eugene, Washington County, and Multnomah County. Now, just small swings in, in the return mean big impacts on the bottom line to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's easy for me to stand up here as mayor and say that I'm proud of the job we're doing at the city because I see it every day. But I also know that you, the community, are seeing it as well. In a 2004 community survey, 61% of Gresham residents said they would rate the performance of the city as pretty good or excellent. Now fast forward in a similar survey last summer. 77% of Gresham residents said they would rate the performance of the city as good or excellent. Now, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that I'm satisfied with a C plus, but I will say that a 16-point climb should make us all proud of the progress we're making. Organizational culture is incredibly hard to change, and trust is even harder to build. And all of this occurred in a climate where overall perceptions of government seem to be moving hard in the opposite direction. During the state of the city, we often take time to recognize the tremendous work of city employees. But I don't want to miss the opportunity to recognize the tremendous work of our community as well. Over the past several years, Gresham's annual art walk has slowly grown into one of the highest profile signature events. Now, there are many people who will play a role in that event, but there is one person who steps up year after year to make it happen. The work is often thankless, and she does it out of a passion for her community. Judy Hahn started Art Walk over a decade ago as a way to create community and build activity by drawing people downtown. Today, we have 10,000 people and over 100 artists flood into Gresham's downtown every summer. It's a tremendous day and a tremendous event. Judy is here tonight. Judy, would you please stand so that we can thank you for all you do in the community? While super volunteers like Judy step up and help deliver the major events that create Gresham's vibrancy, we have thousands of others in the community who each day give a little bit more of their time and effort to make Gresham better. Just in the past year, the city had 2,600 volunteers contribute more than 14,000 hours to our city. For perspective, that represents nearly seven full-time employees worth of volunteer time for the city. If you have volunteered for the city of Gresham in the past few years, please stand and be recognized. Thank you all for your service. You, you, the city council didn't stand, but they are also volunteers donating their time as well. Thank you for your service as well. The spirit of helping others is also on the rise in Gresham, and we are seeing evidence of that in two of our highest-profile nonprofit organizations. 
Both Snowcap and my father's house are expanding their operation. Snowcap is making room for more food storage and freeze, freezer space to help feed our hungriest citizens. Nearby, the stepping stone addition to my father's house is slated to open to meet the needs of single mother families. Now, tremendous women run both these organizations, and their names have almost become synonymous with their brands. Could Judy Alley and Kathy Weiss please stand up and be recognized for all that you do in our community? Snowcap and my father's house are just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the investments we are seeing in our safety net agencies. The Good News Clinic is looking at an ex expansion of the health care service services it provides in Rockwood, and Human Solutions recently wrapped up their awesome new facility. In addition, out of the devastating recent news that the PAL Center in Rockwood would be closing the doors, came the very exciting news that the Boys and Girls Club and Friends of Children were gearing up to step in, fill the void, and invest in a whole new facility. We are extremely excited to see the impact of these partners and the impact that they will have on our children. Along with these agencies, the city is also in the midst of some exciting investments. You may have noticed that some changes are afoot in Main City Park, the city's flagship public space. We're making trailhead improvements that will better connect the Springwater Trail with our blossoming downtown and improving the flow of people throughout the park. If you haven't been through recently, go by and take a look. I'm also pleased to announce that the city will be formally dedicating a new trailhead to honor Gresham's iconic former mayor, Gussie McRobert, who passed away this last year. Gussie was a tiger when it came to supporting Gresham's Park and open spaces, and though we already miss her, it will be wonderful for the thousands of bicyclists, walkers, and park users to see a physical manifestation of her legacy in the heart of our city. Another nearby park is also poised for new excitement. We're drawing closer to constructing Gresham's placemaking children's fountain at the Arts Plaza an amenity that will help program our newest park and our urban core with families, children, and energy. The original concept for the park included a fountain, and we anticipate that it will be a terrific free place for families with young kids to recreate in the summer and will improve the overall downtown aesthetic at other points during the year. We also anticipate that investments like this in our key areas of the city will continue to help attract new, valuable development and business activity, rising the tide for the whole community. Of course, finding the resources for this investment was not easy. We absolutely did not want to use revenue that could otherwise be spent on critical core services like police and fire. So instead, we got creative. The city will be using federal community development block grant dollars to fund the project. We traditionally use a portion of these federal funds for capital improvement projects, so the fountain was a good fit and will be able to fund it, uh, its construction with no general fund resources, which as you know go largely to police and fire. Now, <clears throat> I'm not naive to the fact that building a fountain isn't the easiest political choice in the world. And there will certainly be those who say that we shouldn't go big on projects like this. But I think it's okay for us to think bigger than that and to look for these types of creative opportunities to be a generation of builders, always looking forward and asking what we can do to, to nurture community investments. We could sit back and never push forward for amenities and investments. And sure, at the end of the day, we could save a few bucks and we could avoid a few uncomfortable criticisms. But in the long run, what does that get us? I think, we're all pretty, I think we're all probably extremely grateful that our parents and grandparents didn't think that way. Instead, leaving us an inheritance of colleges, hospitals, beautiful parks, and pristine buttes in open spaces. Mount Hood College is one prime example of our community making investments. You know that when the Gresham community got together and proposed uh, Mount Hood Community College, the proposal went to the voters in 1965 and it prevailed with almost 80%, over 80% of the vote. Along with the improvements to Main City Park and the Arts Plaza, just last week we celebrated the groundbreaking for the Rockwood Police Facility, launching a nine-month construction effort that will deliver on an integral part of Rockwood Urban Renewal Plan. This facility will provide a highly visible, attractive-looking police present in a crucial area of our city. 
In addition to the new police facility, much is afoot in Rockwood. The Rockwood Community Development Corporation is gaining momentum in their plan to help bring local housing, grocery options, and social services to Rockwood, all with the vision of improving self-sufficiency and opportunity. Speaking of opportunity, there is momentum building in Rockwood around the concept of opportunity communities, which help pair people in poverty with volunteers who can help, bringing mentorship and access to services to people to their personal and unique points of need on a very individual level. Through this personal relationship and individual attention, much progress can be made not only in transforming the area, but in transforming the lives within it. And we celebrate these ex exciting developments. We also know that the city is the owner of one prime redevelopment site in Rockwood, where the former Fred Meyer building sat. We will continue to work closely with the development community to, development community to find the best option for that site and for the neighborhood. But I can also assure you that we have no intention of settling for substandard apartments or overbuilt retail on that site. Rockwood has character and history, and it has a ton to offer. As mayor, I patently refuse the premise that the neighborhood cannot prosper. We are seeing too much momentum across the board to even begin to believe that. Too many people are investing too much of their time, too much of their talent, and too much of their hearts and souls to sell this area short. These investments in our nonprofit sector and in city facilities and property mirror the investments we're seeing in the rest of the community. I've spoken at length in the past about the success of our garage to storefront program, which was every bit as simple in its inception as it has been effective in its implementation. Staring down the barrel of the worst economy of our lifetimes, we asked what we could do to help grow new investment in the community. And we racked our minds for ideas. It, it occurred to us that the very best option would be to get out, of our, get out of the way and help entrepreneurs set up shop. We said that if you wanted to open a new or expanding small business in Gresham's key commercial areas, you would not owe the city a dime for water and sewer hookup fees or park system development charges, business licenses, or transportation fees. Zero, nada, nothing. By the way, our incentive program came with a dedicated person at City Hall to help our entrepreneurs through the process, bringing them along from the moment they pulled their first permit until the moment they pulled the chain on their open sign. Well, after the initial year and two renewals, the program has finally come to an incredibly successful end. In total, we had 144 new or expanding businesses open up, filling more than 225,000 square feet of previously vacant and blighted storefronts. Now, I could go on at length about the positive impact this program has had on our business community, but I thought it might be better for you to hear directly uh, from Dwight Untie, a commercial property owner in Gresham, who has who's seen the transformation that has taken place. Three or four years ago, downtown Gresham was rather quiet. You could walk down Main Street, there were numerous uh, vacant storefronts, and some business activity, but really pretty modest. Currently, the dynamic downtown has improved dramatically. It has a community feel, it has a wonderful, charming downtown. Store frontages are full with new businesses, there's significant pedestrian activity on the sidewalks, and there's just an overall enhanced vibrancy and vitality in the downtown core. Gresham stands out uh, shoulders above in terms of its downtown area, and it's just a terrific place to live, work, and play. As you heard from Dwight, the investments that these businesses have made have helped alter the fabric of the community. They have added vibrancy and activity, and we owe a huge debt of gratitude to all the entrepreneurs and the business people in our community. Our medium-sized and larger enterprises are also on the rise. In a room filled with active community leaders and involved citizens, there probably aren't many people here who are not aware of the awesome community spirit at places like Riverview Community Bank and Gresham Ford. Both of these tremendous businesses made investments this past year, with Riverview opening a Gresham branch and Gresham Ford setting up a whole new shop and putting even deeper roots in the Gresham community. Now, Riverview was just one of five banks to open up new branches, branches in Gresham in the past two years. 
I've heard it said that banks are good bellwethers for future growth because they don't invest in areas that don't show great potential. I'd say one or two would hint at good news to come, but approaching a half dozen starts to tell a story about the positive growth that lies ahead for Gresham. On the industrial front, the past year has again given us cause for optimism, as many of our major employers have undergone another round of substantial investment. 2012 brought us the opening of Organically Grown Corporation with 124 employees and almost $7 million of new investment. And we saw Boeing of Gresham start another round of investment, which we helped spark with an enterprise zone approval last month. On Semiconductor was another point of success, starting another round of investment just like Boeing. And of course, On Semiconductor is adjacent to the largest single shovel-ready industrial site in the region, Gresham Vista Industrial Park. And we have worked actively with our partners at the Port of Portland to recruit the right companies for that important location. Together, over the past five years, these two employers have added over 500 new jobs in their Gresham plants. We're fortunate to not be alone in these economic development recruitments. Along with our partners at the State of Oregon and the Port of Portland, we enjoy a fantastic relationship with the East Metro Economic Alliance, which is a great united voice for the business community in East County and helps us speak to the virtues of doing business here in Gresham. In addition to these higher profile recruitments and expansions, Gresham actually pushed through the recession with a critical mass of smaller, smaller scale victories. Despite the last five recessionary years and a very slow recovery, the city of Gresham, Gresham's industrial space has seen significant infill. Right before the recession hit, five new speculative industrial parks were built in Gresham with a total of more than 765,000 square feet of space. Today, I'm happy to report that four of the five parks are fully leased, with the fifth one very near full capacity. Since 2008, at least 17 new companies with more than 600 employees have moved into these five business parks. These business investments, be they small businesses or major industrial manufacturers, are doubling down on Gresham. They are buying a hot stock and are poised to profit from an era of growth and prosperity. In addition to the investments being made by our businesses, small and large, we are also starting to see a new trend emerge in Gresham. Young families with the opportunity to live anywhere in the region are making a conscious decision to choose Gresham. You know, we have suffered from others using our challenges to define us for so long that I think we may have started to forget how much we have to offer. Young families want to live in a place that still has some grit and culture, some diversity and an edge. They want to have main streets with local merchants and commercial areas with vibrant livability. They want large lots and yards and a lot more house for their dollar. They want recreation options, parks, trails, and natural areas. Gresham has every single quality on that list and people are taking notice. Now, right now, you're probably thinking, oh, Shane, we know you love Gresham. Don't try and pretend like we're the next Mississippi Avenue or something. Well, I'll tell you, I don't have any aspiration to be the next Mississippi Avenue, complete with unicycle jugglers and double-decker bikes and, you know, those sort of things. But I do think that a family renaissance of sorts is underway. Take, for example, the Landolt family, which moved here in 2012. We drove down this neighborhood and we immediately noticed that the houses were very well kept. The value um, that we were looking for was there. We also considered looking at homes out in the Happy Valley area and Damascus area and Clackamas area. We love to take our boys to places such as Mount Hood, to the Columbia River, so everything is within a couple hours away. My favorite thing about Gresham is the Spring Water Trail. We're able to go down and just enjoy the outdoors as a family. And then on our way back, we'll often stop in downtown Gresham and either enjoy Frenzy or go and have lunch somewhere. The community events that I really enjoy, one is the Farmer's Market. I love to go down there and get fresh produce. Really what comes to mind for community events that we're involved with is really Little League. We're, we're at the Little League fields all summer long and, and just enjoy that. You're in the outdoors plus you're supporting your children so it's a fun time for us. Gresham is just a nice place to live. 
The land alts picked Gresham because it offers value, family amenities, and a sense of community better than our neighbors. But they aren't the only ones who are seeing the promise that Gresham is making. Let me introduce you to the Kogas. I chose to have my business in Gresham because I saw so much opportunity here. I think that the, the region is poised for a lot of growth here in the next couple years. It's a really close uh, business community. The neighborhood I live in is actually uh, the neighborhood that I grew up in. Some of the community events that I enjoy around Gresham uh, are going to include Teddy Bear Parade. Uh, that's one event that I'm always involved with my family. There's so many organizations that, that are part of that. Gresham's a wonderful place to raise a family. Gresham is pretty cool. Did you hear that? Jared assessed the region and chose Gresham because this is the place that he saw growth and opportunity. The families in these videos represent what we have going for us and speak to the amenities, the community feel, the events, the festivals, and the human capital that we have in Gresham. The numbers are encouraging. In each of the past two years, we had more residential real estate transactions in Gresham than we did in the roaring year of 2007. The Landolts and the Kogas are here tonight. Could you please stand and give them a warm Gresham welcome? You know, people want to raise their kids in a place where the graduation rate in Gresham Barlow School District is about 10% higher than the state average and the best in Multnomah County. The nearby Centennial School District is home to Kevin Ricker at Centennial High School, who was honored as the state's principal of the year. They want to invest in a place that has a Springwater Trail for family bike rides. They want to invest in a place that offers a teddy bear parade and a blooming business environment. While I firmly believe that Gresham is on the rise, I also want us to be very purposeful in helping that rising tide continue. It has been a very long time, perhaps dating back to our parents' generation, since this community has sat down together to ask what we can do to help Gresham, this place that we love, thrive, as opposed to discussing which areas require cuts and disinvestment. I want to convene a group to start mapping out some of these opportunities for community investment and amenities. Now relax, you know me well enough to know by now that I'm not proposing a three-year Metro-esque dot exercise with pastels and all of that sort of thing. But I do want to convene a group of community partners to finally collectively ask what it is that Gresham needs. You know, we are a community of over 100,000 people with a very diverse urban population. It's not just okay to ask what our modern city requires. We have an obligation to do so. Is it a community center? More activity for our youth? A Trader Joe's? A Macy's? Better parks or ball fields? More education infrastructure? The first step to making the community a better place is getting together and dreaming a little, and I want to do just that. In the coming weeks and months, we will begin convening this group, and all are welcome. If you want to be a part of the effort to grab hold of the momentum we are seeing and the positive spirit we have in Gresham, we want you on the team. Shoot me an email or a letter, phone call, send me a note on the mayor's Facebook page. I can't tell you exactly where this process will go, but I can say without hesitation that it is long overdue. There are plenty of reasons why we can't build something, or restore something, or invest in something, create something out of nothing. And I'm familiar with every single one of those reasons. And trust me, we spend plenty of time dwelling on them. But at the same time, scanning this room, I see hundreds of reasons why we can build, why we can restore, and why we can invest, and why we can create new community. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm pretty done hearing about the obstacles we face, and I suspect you may be done hearing about those too. So if you want to very purposefully pivot the conversation, transition the dialogue, and start a new narrative, I'm ready to grab hold of that effort and run. Through efforts like this, we will once again take the reins of our community and steer it in a specific direction forward. There is no question that the state of our city is surging. It is indeed a time of investment in Gresham right now, and I believe firmly that our community is ready to go. We are investing in our children and the possibilities that only they could imagine. 
I saw that investment firsthand last August as the youngsters on the Gresham Nationals Little League team accomplished a task so lofty in magnitude that only they could have possibly conceived of it. As they moved from their regular season to the District 2 competition and from there on to the state championship to the Northwest Regional Championship, the community began to take notice. We knew these kids were good, but we had no idea how good they were. They played their hearts out in the Northwest Regional Championship, and lo and behold, they won the thing. Do you know what a victory in the Northwest Regional Championship gets you? That's right, a berth in the hollowed Little League World Series in South Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Now, I've been to South Williamsport, and let me tell you what it lacks in urban amenities it makes up for in pixie dust. That magical place might as well have been Never Never Land for these young men. The Gresham Nationals did their job, making us proud and representing the very best in our community. They earned their World Series birth through their play, but let me tell you, it took a village to get their families there to enjoy the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity with them. The Gresham Nationals are here tonight. Boys, could you stand and be recognized for your community? We, as a community, came together and invested in these tremendous young men and their dream and their amazing accomplishments. We bought stock in each and every one of them because they showed us that optimism and believing in the inconceivable is the path to success. We held fundraisers and barbecues. We passed the hat. Our business community stepped up, as it so often does, to close the gap, to help those families join their boys so that on Little League's biggest stage, they could look up from that batter's box and see their moms and dads beaming with pride. You don't see that kind of investment in communities that don't have promise and optimism and spirit. Gresham is brimming with chance and hope, and investment is happening all around us. We are investing in services, as we saw during the community revenue discussion last fall. We are seeing new families like the Landolts and the Kogas picking Gresham over other cities in the region and investing in homes and businesses. We are seeing the 144 entrepreneurs who accessed our Garage to Storefront program investing in Gresham and putting open signs in key areas of our city. We have spent too many years letting others define us instead of telling our own tremendously positive story. Optimists make investments, and those investments should lead us as we set about assessing the state of the city. Make the next two dozen conversations you have about Gresham reflect the wonderful elements that we have going for us. As mayor, I have the opportunity to visit communities across the state. And here's a little secret about each one of them. They have issues. We all do. The difference is in the narrative, and we get a hand in how we choose to tell our story. Make the conscious decision tonight to be an optimist. Dwell on the positive, not because we're ignoring uh, areas in which we need to improve. I've certainly never been one to shirk away from identifying our challenges. But while those issues exist, we cannot forget that we've got a great thing here. Consciously choose to be a part of that positive story. Now let me tell you, I've been in this community for most of my life, and as a business owner and an elected leader, I feel like I'm qualified to observe that Gresham, as a community, is prudently tight with the pocketbook. But at the same time, this community never misses a great investment opportunity, and it rises to the occasion every time to be a part of the momentum of the future. I hope that by now you know that I'm a guy who gives it to you straight. I wouldn't stand up here and tell you that it's time to put the doom and gloom of the past years of economic struggle behind us if I didn't believe emphatically that we are emerging from the economic muck with a full head of steam. I wouldn't stand up here and tell you that the time is right now to start talking about how we want to make our city better if I didn't think the community was ready to move with that vision. I wouldn't introduce you to the Kogas and the Landolts if I didn't think you were starting to see the same movement of families choosing Gresham for many of the same reasons. 
We've got a great energy building here, and now is the time to leave negativity and gloom at the door, because I'm telling you, together we are going to surge. Gresham has so much potential and so much going for it. We have been dealt a sweet hand with our historic roots, our family orientation, our close access to all of the things that make Oregon so special. It is a tremendous honor to serve as your mayor, and I'm constantly humbled by the many, many dedicated people who are doing so much in so many areas of our community. There is no question that our city is on the move, and I'm personally committed to grab every last bit of that momentum and double it. But I won't, I can't do it without you. Are you with me? Thank you. Thank you.